So welcome. Uh, we are here at the Euro Oncology platform today, and we join forces between the kidney and the bladder group. Uh, so today we have uh, Dr. Benjamin Feder, that is the chief for the bladder uh, Euro Oncology part. Welcome, Benjamin. Thank you, Kami. And I'm Carmen Meir, and I'm the chief for the kidney part of the Euro Oncology platform. So we are here today to talk about the new delivery methods that we have for the bladder cancer. And there is a lot going on. So yeah. can you tell us something about it, Ben? Yeah, indeed. Uh, I think this is a, a very attractive part right now. And we have a lot of uh, highlight spots on this uh, new delivery methods uh, for giving the drug directly into the bladder. Uh, we have actually uh, four studies that are uh, really interesting using TAR. TAR is a medical device looking like a pretzel mm -hmm. uh, floating into the bladder in the urine. And uh, four studies are are actually enrolling patients uh, in these settings. We have two studies in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer in BCG naive and in uh, BCG um, un uh, unresponsive. And we have two studies in muscle invasive bladder cancer, one uh, in uh, neoadjuvant treatment and one in patients who are unfit for cystectomy and who will receive either radio, chemo, or the TAR plus cetrelimab uh, immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. And basically, this, uh, all these studies are using uh, this small pretzel, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, which is uh, installing and diffusing the treatment for uh, the whole time where it is into the bladder. Slow release, no? Really yeah, something indeed. Like that. And it's uh, actually gemcitabine. Mm -hmm. And so the, the so you mean that the drug is directly derived to the tumor, right? That Indeed. would be the what it makes the difference. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it seems that it's it's working really well. We have the first results of the primary uh, preliminary sorry results of the Sunrise One, what was uh, at the AUA, and uh, presented that the complete response rate with gemcitabine uh, with using the brazil uh, go up to 73 percent of uh, complete response, which was a really high uh, rate mm -hmm. uh, compared to the 38% uh, of uh, cetrelimab, the immunotherapy mm -hmm. in these settings that was comparable with what we have in pembrolism with a pembro mm -hmm. uh, in these settings. Mo of monotherapy. Yeah, monotherapy in uh, BCG and responsive patients. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we still uh, see that this device may help us to provide a better, um, a better drug delivery to the to the tumor. Um, I also know that Kame, you you used already uh, a tar this this pretzel. Can you can you give us some some insights about it and how it works? How do you how do you insert it into the patients? Is it complicated? It's actually very easy from the urology perspective. I participated in the initial trials from is the initial company that had the TAR 200, mm -hmm. and this was on patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer, not eligible for cystectomy, and it was in monotherapy. After the complete TUR, patients would get the delivery of the drug with the pretzel in the bladder uh, over a cycle of 21 days. So it was kind of easy that we come to clinics, we, we would do a cystoscopy where we would assess if there was any kind of recurrence, anything that would be abnormal. And then uh, you would uh, pull the prior um, pretzel, if it had one, <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be, you would have to check that it's complete, so there was nothing missing, and that all the particles were uh, completely delivered. You would pull it and make sure that it was fine outside, mm -hmm. and then you would load the second, um, the second, the next pretzel that you wanted to insert. And it would be pushed through a, a very easy pusher through the cystoscope, so nothing complicated. You would have to make sure that it's completely rolled in the bladder, and you then do a cystoscopy you after do a you cystoscopy. inserted the breast. Exactly. So, yeah, so everything, everything is is quite yeah. easy. That means you don't need to have your patient like hospitalized. It's Not just a, a no. random cystoscopy yeah. that you 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 yeah. do. So it's outpatient clinics, and it's mm -hmm. in under local anesthesia, right? Yeah, the, like do a flexi system, nothing complicated. But it's important, uh, at least when we were enrolled, is to check the urine analysis to make sure that there was nothing else going on. Mm -hmm. And um, what I really feel that sometimes patients will have some issues with overactive, kind of overactive bladder. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, especially because these patients will have muscle invasive. Mm -hmm. Actually, the ones that I put, they had locally advanced disease. 
and so that that can be sometimes an issue for them to hold it and to be able to do their regular life mm -hmm. uh, so th this is very important <coughs> also to to um, as we have a new tool to treat our patient, we also have to inform them how to react with mm -hmm. the, the effects of having uh, a device into the bladder. Right. Like meaning drinking more, have to have like, to be able that the bristle is always to floating. Dilute, and yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed, and sometimes you have to use also anticholinergic or alpha blockers if if there are symptoms. And symptoms, but yeah. it's mm -hmm. I think it's it's um, it's also something that uh, as urologists, we are, we are seeing these new drugs arriving and potentially this device will also be interesting interesting with new drugs like uh, adafitinib. We know that there yeah. are studies with TAR-210, TAR another same device, mm -hmm. different drug. And I think it's very important to, to see that we, we need to understand how to inform these patients mm -hmm. about this uh, new yeah. strategy. They will just hop on and uh, learn what's coming next. Yes, definitely, that's for sure. It's, it's, it's here, it's to stay. It's safe. <laughs> thank you very much, Carmen. You too, thank you, Ben. Thank you.